What's going on world? It's your man Saint Uno back again for another one. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about time management, aka the real divine timing. Because as often as we like to do on this said channel, um we like to take things that are typically associated with spirituality or religion or new age or you know what I'm saying certain things that are kind of buzzwordy and then get into the actuality of these things because the reason why these terms are even able to become buzzwordy and um, clickbaity in the first place is because yes they are pointing to a particular energy that does have um, a certain amount of spiritual significance right but at the same time uh, a lot of the times the definitions or the way that they are being portrayed by people online or just in the popular lexicon and things of that nature um, people aren't necessarily getting to the root there's still it's, it's like a new age form of religion right so it's still a lot of spookism behind things there's still a lot of behind these phrases like manifestation and chakras and rituals and you know saying divine timing twin flame soulmate all these kind of things um you know if they yeah they do have significance and they are pointing towards actual spiritual significance um spiritually significant phenomenon but at the same time you know what i'm saying a lot of times they're they they, they give them too much too much spookism they, they they don't really just because at the end of the day magic is not hocus pocus magic is not oh you know what i'm saying all foo-foo imaginary land no you know what I'm saying the people that run the world do fucking magic and what does that look like every day they got their foot on your neck every day you're working to support their system every day they're putting in work to uphold their system and every day they're controlling the minds of the masses while the masses minds are being controlled so we're talking about just everyday psychology everyday world domination everyday manipulation everyday like this is just everyday shit you know what i'm saying so that's the real magic is understanding that this shit is just you know what i'm saying what we use in life to get create better circumstances and situations where we don't have to lift a finger you know what i'm saying so we can do telekinesis not like gene gray on x-men where you go like this and you can move a brick with your mind but you can have a certain amount of influence and power in the world, come up with an idea and a concept in your mind. Hmm, I want this to be built. And then you got the certain power and influence and circumstances and situations where you can make other people build that building for you that started and originated in your mind. So you're moving a brick, you're moving stones, you're moving matter with your mind. But it's not like the shit is actually floating around. You can just get other people to do it by creating um you know what I'm saying indoctrination um religious control um money you know what I'm saying safety security stability shelter survival mode kind of circumstances and situations and just general human psychology and all this kind of stuff so we're always trying to demystify right <clears throat> so that's the that's the kind of uh what's what you call it in the book <laughs> the prefix that's the little prefix right so now that you understand the kind of okay magic ain't just some hocus pocus it's some everyday shit well then let's get into this magical um term that has been coined by the new age communities called divine timing because originally i was just going to make this video uh time management but like i like to have equilibrium right so just naming it time management that puts me too much far into just like a oh i'm just like a motivational speaker oh i'm just like a oh uh, like a high value male like oh yeah manage your money manage your time but all that kind of shit or it's like yeah that's that's important like the kind of physical 3d aspects of it but where spirituality and quote unquote magic gets incorporated is it's like you're adding an extra layer of intensity to everything that you're doing so you're not yeah you're not just um someone who manages your time well or you're not just someone who takes accountability or you're not just someone who is high value you are doing all these things in the regular world like the regular humans but you're adding an extra layer of witchcraft having on your mind oh, okay I'm actually doing this ritual and spell. I'm actually doing this witchcraft, you know what I'm saying? So now you you got the best of both worlds. You're like you got the spiritual manifestation witchcraft power of the spiritual community, which that is 
there is power there, but a lot of times they fall short by thinking that's all it takes and not actually putting no boots on the ground and doing no actual physical world work. So it just be a lot of shit where you just kind of, you know what I'm saying you're saying buzzwords online and you might get a following like that but in term, in terms of actually affecting the world and getting some real change done you ain't really about shit and then you got the demons in the world who just think oh astrology is bullshit spirituality is bullshit oh everything is just money and material and you know what I'm saying oh getting to the bag and being practical and you know what I'm saying putting in all this hard work you know what I'm saying working 5000 hours you know what I'm saying Gary V you know what I'm saying kind of type energy so it's like they are the people that actually got the money and the resources and the political sway and the lobbyists and the control and all the institutions that actually run the world, but they do it from a flunked out perspective because they're not incorporating um, spirituality into it. So we're going to merge it both together and, um, you know what I'm saying, get the best of both worlds, baby. Divine feminine, divine masculine, you know what I'm saying? So divine timing, right? Like I said, I, really, I was originally just going to make this um, time management because... I realized in my own personal life that time management is the like they say like that the, that phrase the great equalizer people say like oh money is the great equalizer or education is the great equalizer well those things aren't the great equalizer because we all don't have equal access to those things some people don't have access to money some people don't have access to education you know what I'm saying but what do we all have access to we all have access to the same motherfucking 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and once you can begin to live your life and like realize the preciousness of time and how to utilize it to its max potential, now, now you're going to start seeing real manifestations and materializations and real shit happening. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know I'm saying I'm 30 at the time of making this video. I feel like if you if you can if you can hop into this energy before your Saturn return, that then you really gonna be a bad motherfucker, right? But a lot of the times, you know what I'm saying, um, when you're younger and shit like that, you kind of take time for granted. You know what I'm saying? You take, um, you know what I'm saying? You may be in more and and, and and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You you like to an extent, it's cool to just be enjoying the moment and. Life don't always got to be no hustle, 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 grind shit. But let's just say if you are in that kind of energy before you can reach your Saturn return, then you're going to be ahead of a lot of motherfuckers um, when the Saturn return comes around. And that's when people just start getting serious about Saturn. I mean, about time, but it's essentially the same thing. Saturn rules time. You know what I'm saying? We're on a Saturn centric uh, model for time. Seven days of the week, the last day of the week being Saturday. And then we go back into Sunday, the first day of the week. You know what I'm saying? So. Saturn, that's Kronos, you know what I'm saying? That's like the father, that's like father time energy, right? So your Saturn return is all about like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, it's time to use, it's, it's all about reveal, revealing to you, okay, you may have not been using your time as wisely as you could, or you may have been wasting a lot of time doing this and wasting a lot of time doing that. And that may have been cool when you were younger, you know what I'm saying, when shit wasn't that serious, but once you hit that Saturn return, shit starts to look a lot more serious. And you start to be like, okay, I can't just use the excuse of, oh, I'm young anymore, or I'm a kid anymore, or, you know what I'm saying, I'll, I'll do it later. No, you do it right now, like the, like the commercial I always talk about on BET. No, you, you always talk about, maybe I'll go to school next year, next semester. No, do it right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the Saturn return energy. So that kind of forces you to, but I mean, not necessarily everybody, though, because some people still hit it and they still be bullshitting. Um, based on them not necessarily knowing what they want to do. Um, so they may have this pressure of, oh, I need to do something with all my time, but they may have dedicated all their 20s and shit like that to just working a job and not developing um, no real passion or no creative gift or no, and it's not all about being creative, but just no, you know what I'm saying, nothing for itself, nothing that they can, whether that's owning your own business or at least just finding a career that's really in line with what you want to do it and not just, um, you know what I'm saying, a career where you're just chasing the money or, oh, okay, I just know somebody at this company, so I work there, or oh, my parents did this. Some flunked out shit that you're going to get tired of doing. You know, they got no mission, you know what I'm saying? So it's good. So even if you bullshitted before your Saturn turn, it, it, you may have been bullshitting in terms of not using your time as wisely as you could, but as long as you weren't bullshitting in the aspect of finding a mission, you know what I'm saying, finding something that you want to dedicate your life to, yeah, you may have not gone as hard as you quote unquote should have and like manage your time as well in that but at least when it does come time to hit your Saturn return okay boom at least you do got a mission so now you know what to 
manage your time because that'd be a half the battle. A lot of people be like, like I said, they'd be feeling this pressure of, oh, I got to manage my time better. But that just turns into them like working more hours at a job or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, which just leads to more unhappiness and more unfulfillment. And then it just, and then you bounce back and say, well, say, fuck the job. And you spend a whole bunch of time vacationing and shit like that. And you're just always in this kind of like back and forth energy of like overworking too hard and overindulging and not working. And it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Once you got that mission, it's like, okay, now you can really, um, every day becomes so precious, right? Because um, now everything you're doing is for that mission. So that job that you work, you know what I'm saying, it's you, you may necessarily need that money to support your mission, right? But you still understand that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I told y'all I always get snotty when I make these videos. I'll be talking all day to people and I don't have to clear my nose and as soon as I make it, but anyway, I'm gonna stop bitching. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you may have to, um, you, you may have to put in that, the, the hours at your job but once you have a mission, then you then you won't let the time spent at that job drain you. You'll just be you'll like get energy from that job. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll be I, one of my new affirmations is um, my job, the job, the job don't rob me. I rob the job. And that's always the perspective you want to be in. If you have to have a job or some shit like that, you want to be robbing the job, not letting the job rob you of your time, your money and most importantly, your fucking energy, because people oftentimes find themselves in circumstances where the job they 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 um need to to support their bills and shit like that um it takes too much energy from them you know what i'm saying so they by the time they do get home and shit like that they don't feel like doing their own creative gifts they don't feel like working on their own business working on their own passions and shit like that so it just ends up being in a situation where you know what i'm saying you just work you just live to work and you work to live now um even if that is the case and your job does drain the fuck out of you you might still need to, um, you might need to just like still not cry too much and be like, oh, I'm too drained. Like you may be drained after your job and I'm not here to say, oh, okay, I, I, I don't understand that. But at the same time, it's, you got to say fuck that shit too. You know what I'm saying? And the more you can say fuck that, no matter how tired you are, if you can come home and, um, or even before you go to work, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, or during work, I, ideally that's how you really rob the job. If, um, if I don't know how intense your shit is, but if you can be working on your shit, as long, as long as you're spending as much p- time out of your day as possible, working on your business, working on your creative gifts, working on your goals with your vision for your life and not just, um, and then just using that job to just, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, pay your basic necessities and then also, take that money and fuel it into whatever you got going on too, because that's another misconception in spiritual community too, thinking that you don't have to deal with the real world in some sense where it's like, Oh yeah, you want to be all creative and do all this shit on your own. But whenever it comes time to invest physical money, motherfuckers just go, go dark. They go quiet. They go absent and they don't want to spend money, whether that's spending money with the community that you're a part of, that you're building like-minded individuals who are on the same mission as you or even in your own creative gifts. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, um, they'll self-sabotage thinking, oh yeah, I don't have that much. So especially nowadays, let's say if you're a music artist and shit like that, you can, you know, you can record music on your phone, get free beats off your phone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, get free album artwork. You know what I'm saying? You can do a lot of free shit and that's good for a certain point. But at the same time, you got to understand too, that spending money is, damn near the hardest ritual and spell you can do on earth. You know what I'm saying? That's like, fuck all that gyms and Chris, like all that shit's cool. Yeah. But we got to look at who actually runs the world and that's witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? They got people waking up every day, dying, giving their whole life to a piece of paper with somebody's face on it. Right. So you always have to go to where the actual energy is. So whether it's not about whether you think that's right or wrong. or Oh, I don't care. It's just dead Mason's face on a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay. That's all cool. That's all great. But in order to change that energy, you still have to participate with that energy for the time being until it's a situation where you can put your face on some green pieces of paper, even if that's what you want to do. You might want to have a whole new different bartering game system. Yeah, that's cool. But for right now, you got to deal with reality, spiritual people. Okay, so when it comes time to invest in your craft, invest in your mission, invest in your business, you have to be spending that money 
like happily like you don't don't try to be cheap and just think and like lie to yourself and think oh i'm being spiritual because i don't need money to get a nigga no you need goddamn money to do anything in this world or else you're just going to keep not having power and you're just going to be keep being this little fringe um spiritual community that that holds no weight or significance in the actual world because it takes people's attention right so if everybody's attention is on the money it don't matter if you think that's right or wrong that's what the fuck it is you're never going to have any sway no dominion and no power and no influence down here unless you can get the masses and a part of getting not totally it's not all about money you still got to have charismatic gifts still got to have a mission still got to stand for something still got to be intellectual still got to know how to affect people emotionally still got to you know what i'm saying do all those things but don't just demonize the money and think, oh, well, I, I don't necessarily need that. I can just live my mission and not, man, fuck all that. So, right, like I said, this gets back to time management. You know what I'm saying? What do they say? Time is money, right? So a lot of times managing your time um, falls hand in hand with managing your money, right? So you, you're spending all this time at a job, right? Don't make like one ritual and spell to do is always be making sure that you're spending um, a set amount of money from that job into your creative gifts and your creative passions, right? Because um, that's you showing, showing God essentially what's important to you, where you may be in a quote unquote low paying circumstance and maybe thinking that, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to not spend no money on my creative gifts and do all that shit for free and then take all my money and just use that for my bills and my immediate necessities. But what's your, the ultimate ritual and spell that you're doing you know what I'm saying? It's saying that, okay, um, really what's important to me is the way things are, the shadow government world of safety, security, stability, and shelter. Um, whereas, and, and then this thing that I'm doing in terms of my creative gifts or my passions, that's not really that serious to me because, like I said, God is no respecter of persons. So that it just goes where the energy is. And if the whole world's energy is in money and you're not taking none of that energy and putting it into your gifts because you think, you can just, oh, you're too, too spiritual for that. Well, then you got the game fucked up to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all is that. But I got to blow my nose. I tried to thug it out. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I tried to thug it out for the whole video, but I was like, fuck that, bro. Like, I ain't finna thug shit out. I gotta get this. Now I feel more clairvoyant. You know what I'm saying? I can breathe shit in. But, um, yeah, so time management is everything. Like I said, you gotta make sure that you're spending all the time you can um, after work, before work, all that shit, working on your, um, working on the shit that you wanna get done in life. Because, so that's like a, a way to double that energy too, right? Because now you're not like, you're spending money from the job on your creative passions. That's one witchcraft that you're doing to make them become more real world and substantiated in the actual physical world, which is what they even built money out of, paper and shit like that. So you're spending your paper on your imagination, your dreams, you know what I'm saying? So this is a ritual of making your dreams more substantiated and in this reality. And in the same, in the same time, you're spending time, which is we're in a time-based reality. You know what I'm saying? We're in the third dimension. Everything has length, width, and height, but it also has time. You know what I'm saying? You can't describe something that has length, width, and height, but exists for zero seconds. You know what I'm saying? That means it doesn't exist in the physical realm. Everything has a start date and an end date. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's 3D, but it's really like 4D, 5D type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it has to exist within this time-based model. So, the more you can spend time, <clears throat> time management, you know what I'm saying, on your creative gifts, on your creative passions, on what you're actually trying to manifest in life, whether even if it's not creative, it's just your business, it's just your own personal mission, your own internal world. This is you taking the substances of this world, time and money, and feeding them to your internal world so that your internal world be, can become your external world. And that's essentially what it all is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody just, everybody really got the same missions, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, I want... I want to live my dream life. And when you say that, all you're saying is you don't want to spend any time going to jobs that you don't like or doing shit you don't want to do. You just want to do what you want to do. But in order for that to actually become a reality, that thing that you want to do that's personal to you, internal, has to make some money, right? So you got to make it make money by spending time on it and spending actual money on that. So that is um, the witchcraft of time management and why this is divine timing, right? Because, okay, so I, I probably should have did this at first, but to break down 
the whole misconception of what divine what is like the popular connotation of divine timing within the new age um internet rhetoric right divine timing is essentially um it's kind of like this phrase that i always find problems with when they say oh i don't chase i attract divine timing a lot of people invoke this phrase divine timing when they're talking about not stressing something or not feeling like they have to work overly hard um in order to achieve um something uh in their life you know what i'm saying it's it's all if it was meant to be it would be kind of energy and they don't ever have to you know what i'm saying put in any extra man hours or go overboard into certain things in order to attract those things into your life now that is uh, a bunch of bullshit no divine if you just sit on your ass right and just expect div divine timing to take care of you um then you're never going to experience what you actually wanted. And then you're just going to end up in a situation where you're lying to yourself. It's like, oh, it must have not meant, meant to be then, right? And this is, just a small, um, this is just a small way of the shadow government keeping you in check by um, giving you a, a phrase that makes you feel like you're spiritual, you know what I'm saying? Makes you feel like you know what you're doing by saying, oh, I'm not going to stress this or I'm not going to go against the grain or try to, you know what I'm saying, go too hard at anything because that's me being not spiritual and if in divine timing, if it will happen when it's supposed to happen, right? Now, um, why time management is the real, but like, here's the thing though, right? There is, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, these things point to certain things that are real in the spiritual realm, but they kind of, they kind of misconstrue them and make you miss the point, right? So it's not necessarily to say that um, oh yeah, divine timing isn't a thing at all. Like, yeah, shit, um, is going to happen when it quote unquote is supposed to happen. Right. But the, th the difference is th that doesn't mean in the meantime, you just sit on your ass. That means in the meantime, you work and put in that work every day. Like today is going to be the day for it to happen, even though it may take 15, 20 years for it to actually manifest, you know what I'm saying? But and and that's divine timing, right? So it's like, yeah, it, you may have wanted it to happen the first year you did something or the first five years you did something, right? But that's not for you to say, oh, it didn't happen in the first five, one to five years. Um, well, divine timing, it'll happen eventually. Let me go distract myself into something else. No, you keep putting in that work like you expect it to happen, like you expect your manifestation to be there tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and then the more you do that, because here's the thing too, like you never. Um, you always find something when you're not looking for it, right? So, and this may sound counterintuitive, right? Because I'm telling you to keep working and keep putting in that work in order to achieve something, but that's not you really looking for it. That's you just, um, because basically what your mission should be in life shouldn't even feel like work. So it should never be a scenario where you feel like, oh, I can't do this another day. I need my manifestation. I need my dream business to make money or my dream career to make money overnight because I can't do this for one more day. Well, obviously that's not your real dream. That's just something that you thought you could do. So you end up telling it to yourself. But if you don't feel cool doing that every day and not getting paid nothing for it, then that's not really for you anyway. So that's, so the more you can spend time, um, just being in the actual journey and not looking at it as a destination and just putting in that work over time. This is, um, this kind of puts you more in a, in the opportunity to receive divine timing opportunities, right? Because now like this is when the best shit happens when you're not looking for it. But if you're sitting around saying, Oh, I don't need to put in any work. I don't need to actually do anything. I don't need to manage my time. Well, I could just wake up, you know what I'm saying? go scratch my ball, smoke a blunt, you know what I'm saying? And go to the park and just rub some crystals and gems and then think I'm spiritual and something will happen. No, this is actually you looking for something, right? Because you're not doing anything. So it's like, it's like, it's like you got people on the court playing the game and you got people in the sidelines, in the stands and what are they doing? They're watching the game, right? They're looking for a dunk to happen. They're looking for you know what I'm saying a three pointer to be shot and shit like that. So they lied to you and told you, oh, divine timing just means, oh, just be a bystander. And eventually when it's your time to get in the game, you'll get in the game. But no, you're just going to be a bystander the whole time or on the bench the whole time. It's the people that are actually in the game, you know what I'm saying, making shit happen on an everyday basis 
that are going to actually, you know what I'm saying, hop into this energy of divine timing because they're not the ones looking for something. They're the ones doing something. And then what do we always say? God helps those who helps themselves. So, yeah, they're putting in that work. So they're so busy doing that work that they're not looking for something. And then when you're not looking for something, that means you're not lost. So you've already found it. And that means it's only a matter of time that it, quote unquote, manifests as a real world situation for you to live out and play into. <laughs> and then you're going to have people who, and, and here's the thing, a lot of times people may not even see the work that you're putting in. They may not even see all the hours and all the time and all the money that you're putting in, into your life. And then those same people who just sat by and said, oh, and thought they were more spiritual and holier than thou, said, oh, divine timing, divine timing. Then they see somebody, you know what I'm saying, like you, who they might look down on to a certain extent because they think, oh, this person's lost in the world. They're, they're actually doing, like it's, like, it's not cool to put in work or some shit like that. Like, what kind of fucking world we live in where, like, putting in work is not cool? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, if it's what you want to do, then it's not even really work. So, yeah, go hard at that shit. You're you going to die. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow's not promised. You better get off your ass and do something. What the hell are you just sitting around for, right? So then these people who are just lost in quote-unquote foo-foo internet spirituality and divine timing may look down on certain individuals by going too hard, going too hard. And they may think, aha, well, this person is just wasting their time. I'm, I'm tapped into divine timing. But then eventually when you do manifest what you came to manifest and, you know what I'm saying, you materialize and you um, end up in certain circumstances and situations that are just kind of... Um, by chance, but it's not really by chance. It's just you're in the right place in the right time, you know what I'm saying? Because by you always actually going out in the world and doing stuff and engaging with other individuals, this is going to put you just in more in alignment with what is actually going on in terms of the planets and the stars. And the stars are always moving. The planets are always transitioning. They're always going somewhere, right? So even if you don't necessarily know where the sun and the moon at and shit like that, just the fact that you're always out putting in work, you're always moving, you're always having motion, that puts you more in alignment with the as above, so below. So you're going to manifest more right time, right place scenarios where, yeah, you may have um, <clears throat> been at your minimum wage job, you know what I'm saying? But the reason why you were there is because you were making money for your studio career. <laughs> and then just so happens that day, that motherfucking Akon, only reason I said Akon, because Akon came through the drive through one time when I was in elementary school, or no, in middle school. Uh, he was a bitch, though. He and we was, we was all trying to get an autograph, and he just kept the doors on his Bentley up. But let's say he wasn't a bitch, you know what I'm saying? And um, you started rapping for him in the drive through and shit. And then he's like, oh, okay, boom, I'll focus you. And then you get signed to his record label. But it's like, oh, and then people who thought they were too good for that McDonald's job, they just said, oh, I'm going to just stay at the home and stay in my studio, but I don't really need no money to invest in my uh, career because I'm spiritual and shit like that. Um, they see you getting your opportunity, right, uh, of, of, of going to the studio with Akon because you rap for them in the drive through and they're going to get mad at that. But at the same time, this is your way of teaching them, you know what I'm saying, the lesson that we all need to learn, that God helps those who help themselves. And the real, quote, unquote, divine timing is not sitting around waiting for a particular time because it's always going to be it's never the right time to do what you want to do the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the second best time to plant it is right fucking now you know what i'm saying so that's why time management now based on how many bad seeds you planted in the past yeah you may be in a situation where you got to work hella shitty hours at a shitty job or you got to you know what i'm saying you got certain commitments and re responsibilities that you got to do you know what i'm saying don't get mad you planted those seeds and you got to reap what you sow but as long as you know that as you're taking as much time as possible in your free time and even when you're not your free time, even if you're at work and putting as much money as possible into your internal realm, your in internal realm, your internal gifts, the things that you want to see manifested as your lifestyle out in this world. So you don't have to live the bullshit lifestyle that you live in right now. The more you do that over and over and don't complain and understand, OK, I, I'm not in the energy of waiting for something to happen i'm just making whatever i can happen over time that's going to manifest more circumstances and scenarios of you being in the right time and you rubbing shoulders with the right people right because god helps those who help themselves and you got to always be in motion the same way that the stars are always in motion and not sitting around you know what i'm saying so yeah this video is for all new age people who got the game fucked up and just think at any time any little resistance comes or any kind of thing because a lot of times spirituality gets conflated with just like 
emotions like because it is internal realm i get that so being in tune with your emotions and shit like that is one aspect of it but that's not to say oh okay this job makes me feel emotionally upset oh going out into the world makes me feel emotionally flunked out i'm not going to participate with none of that because i'm too spiritual i'm just going to sit no you got to deal with the re- spirituality is about reality too you know what i'm saying otherwise it's just a word you know what i'm saying so it's really about just making this it's about bringing hell onto earth. I mean, <laughs> bringing hell on earth. We already in hell. Bringing heaven onto earth, you know what I'm saying? Bringing your higher chakras, your imagination, right, into this f- physical lower um, dimension that we manifested through our lower chakras and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So we can bring the bring the clouds down to the to the earth and shit like that. We bring our imagination, our dreams, and make them something that are not a dream. And then you got Walt Disney building a whole bunch of, um, you know what I'm saying, characters and rides and shit at Disneyland. And that's where everybody goes to experience their dream time. Oh, I'm, I just won the Super Bowl. I'm going to go to Disney World. Well, we, we can all have our Disney World. You know what I'm saying? That don't got to be the only version of, you know what I'm saying, living out dreams and imaginations on the third dimension. So you work all year at a job you hate just to, you know what I'm saying, go live a little at um, – <clears throat> fucking uh walt disney on and at the at the end of the year no <clears throat> had you been building your own walt disney as much as you can and every day on your off day and maybe even when it is time to take that vacation and say no nah, i'm not gonna go on vacation right now i'm gonna build my own walt disney uh, eventually you, you're gonna have a circumstance in a situation where you got your own walt disney world and every day is like a dream to you and you ain't got to go through none of that because you manage your time well you know what i'm saying but like i said it's not just about time it's, it's about merging the the demonic the physical the mundane with the spiritual right so yeah time management is a very simple ask is a very simple like good advice kind of thing but um don't just manage your time manage your time for some spiritual shit manage your time for your dream vision dedicate time every day to that creative gift that business that you want to start you know what i'm saying and then take resources from the physical world whether that be the money or the discipline that you even get from, you know what I'm saying, structuring your time, um, you know what I'm saying, on some on some Saturn discipline shit, right? And apply that to your creative gifts, okay, or, or your or your business. I'm gonna set up this amount of time. So now you're blending these two worlds and this is the only way that you can make some spiritual foo foo la la land shit become um a physical reality, which is essentially what we're all trying to do. If you ain't trying to do that, then get the fuck off my channel. You just being entertained. Why are you even here? If you if you're not trying to make, you know what I'm saying, your internal visions a physical reality. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole fucking point. And in order to do that, you have to put you have to manage time because that is the great equalizer that we all have access to twenty four hours a day. So the more you can use that time wisely, whether that be robbing the job for its money to put into your creative gifts and then using your time to work on your creative gifts or work on your business or work on your dream relationship or work on whatever it is you're trying to get going on and to the point where you're not wasting no time just because what is the idle mind? The idle mind is the devil's workshop, you know what I'm saying? Idle mind, then you start thinking of dumb shit, you start thinking of doubts, you start thinking of fears, insecurities, why shit's not possible. You're not going to have time to think of shit not being possible or not being realistic or feasible if you're always just putting in the work towards that, you know what I'm saying? Because it may not be feasible, feasible or realistic, but that's not the fucking point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The point is to just do it like Nike. And then the more you do it, um, yeah, now you're going to align yourselves in certain, certain circumstances and situations um, that can open doors that make that super unlikely um, dream that you had in your head possible because you weren't spending hours out of the day thinking, oh, that's dumb. That's too far away. I don't know nobody in the industry. I don't know nobody that'll invest in my business. You know what I'm saying? No. You were living in that delusion and making it um, a reality by saying, well, even if I don't know nobody in the business or I don't know nobody that can invest a million dollars, I'm going to still write up a business plan. I'm going to still um, pitch my idea to anybody who got five more dollars than me and maybe they can put some money in. I'm still going to, you know what I'm saying, work on this project like I got to meet a deadline, like I got a board of investors, you know what I'm saying? So you're just creating that lie and then you do that enough, that's going to rain down into reality and become a circumstance and situation. Um, when you're least expecting it, when you're not even th- thinking it can happen, um, and because you're, you're going to be in the right place at the right time, because you're always managing your time well, and now managing your time well is the o- only way that you'll actually be able to access a divine timing situation, where it's like, ah, oh, okay, I wanted it to happen back then, but now that I'm, I just met this individual right here at this place in time, 
while I was least expecting it, but I was still putting in the work like I was expecting it. This shows, this is like a guy like revealing to me like how shit actually works. It's like, see, you don't ever want to be lost in expectation, AKA div divine timing, thinking it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. No, you just put in the work. But when you're so busy putting in that work, anything miraculous can happen. And then we can, you can go from, you know what I'm saying, zero to a million just like that overnight. And then, but you realize it took you getting up off your ass every day and doing that to even make that happen. And then that's, that knowledge in and of itself is way more uh, potent and important than any kind of spiritual knowledge of just sitting around waiting on your ass, you know what I'm saying? Because now you understand, even if you lose that dream vision or lose that dream job or lose that dream, whatever, you understand how to create it again, you know what I'm saying? It's just all about putting in work, you know what I'm saying? But not from a man mundane perspective of just putting in work to get a lot of money and feel like you're important in the 3D realm. No, putting in a lot of work, the real work, which is your spiritual mission and, and basically bringing that internal vision, that internal fire and turning it into a external reality. You know what I'm saying? So time management, the only way to is the only way to divine timing. That's pretty much it. That's the takeaway. Um, I appreciate y'all for watching and I catch you on the next one. Peace.